Aloha, and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp, and I'm your host today as we talk about when you can do nothing, what can you do? Today, we have a most amazing human and soul as our guest, um, Jerry Omni, and she is an artist. She's an expression alchemist and a facilitator also on so many different levels. Um, welcome, Jerry. Thank you so much, Tish. I'm happy to be here. You it's, peace. <laughs> it's so wonderful to be able to have you to talk about this. And I wanted to, um, this doesn't normally happen. I don't normally take the uh, title of my show from the guest, but we were just chatting a little bit earlier this week. And I said, Hey, you know, talk to me about this. And you told me a story mm -hmm. and, um, this is something that happened to you so long ago and it's impacted your life so much that I feel like it's, it's important for you to be able to share like a short version of, of this story because it feels like magical and sort of about how we find our way to the messages that the universe and um how the magic can come into our lives do you mind sharing that sure um so i was i was at an event a very big beautiful event with lots of art and music um known as burning man and it was my first year this was in 2007 i was 25 and so there are many people wearing this necklace called a clue necklace. And when you inquire, when I inquired, oh, where did you get this necklace? Like, oh, you have to go to clue camp. Clue camp. Go to clue camp. So in my mind, I had built up this grandiose experience that I was going to have. Long story short, I make my way to this camp that was difficult to find. And the experience was, uh, you know, hmm, how do I explain it? It's like, it felt in the moment, I judged it as kind of woo-woo, you know, but the process was you picked the card, you did this whole thing, and the message on your card was your clue, and then you got your necklace. And so my message was, when you can do nothing, what can you do? And so to 25-year-old Jerry, this didn't mean much. I was kind of like, that's my message, you know, that's my clue of my life, yeah. <laughs> and... um and so many years later, I kept the card and I would always come back to that. When you can do nothing, what can you do? When I had experienced tragedies in my life and in my family and when I feel helpless and hopeless or if I'm injured or if there's suffering going on in the world. And we were talking about with, you know, all the things that have been going on in the world presently that are, you know, started, starting to bubble up to the surface that we're all getting to witness. And that has just come back to me when you can do nothing, what can you do? And for me, it has been, it has turned into the biggest clue of my life. <laughs> I love that. I love that story. And I love how it keeps resurrecting throughout your life. And how, you know, you did mention there's so much going on right now. I mean, we have the Ukraine, we had Maui, we have, um, we have Israel, we have so many things happening. And that's just three. That has nothing to do with even the Amazon or <laughs> there's so many things, right? And it feels to me a lot of times like we are so far removed from it. And I know that social media has the gift of being able to bring us closer closer to the people who are experiencing these things, but, and also closer to, um, what's happening and, um, how, what is one way or what are some of the emotions that you feel can come up with how these things are affecting people and where we are and yeah, thank you for that question. What a, what a question, what a topic. Um, what comes up for me, and I think maybe other people, is 
the distance, like you said, being so removed and uh, what comes along with that can be some guilt um, and some helplessness. Because, you know, at least for me, I can speak from my perspective. The more I try to understand some things and the more I read about the issues, the more convoluted it becomes and the more difficult it is to understand and then the more helpless I feel. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's what we're feeling as a collective is that helplessness, some guilt of just being removed, even though there's nothing we can really do about that. You know? Right. And I think that speaks to the separation too. Right. And, and that separation is, feels really harmful and damaging. I know that's one of the things in my life so far my life experience has really felt damaging to me is whenever I feel separated from um, the collective, from my family, from myself even. So, yeah. So also some other things that could bring up is maybe fear, right? Or anger. Um, people can get mad and how are they? Um, I know you are a facilitator of many things. And how do you help people guide them? How do you guide people through, how can they deal with these emotions and, and, and such during times like this? Well, first it starts with my own practice. Um, you know, I, I practice yoga and meditation. And in my practice, I, I just try to be as conscious as I can about where I'm sending my energy. Because when we're practicing, when we're moving our body, and our breath, we're cultivating energy, you know, and many yoga teachers begin with, with offering us to set an intention. And so I always begin my yoga practice with that and throughout my practice. Um, so there's two ways I do that. Sometimes it's, um, you know, cultivating that energy and just like sending that, that wave into the distance, hoping that it ripples out. Um, and there's like this morning in my practice and I do this sometimes as I kind of zoom in and, um, this, this one can be a little bit more challenging, uh, difficult and can bring up some heavy emotions, but I'll, I'll zoom in and try to like put myself in the body of someone who's suffering and imagine what it must feel like to experience, you know, the catastrophe that many people are experiencing in their body and where that he might go in their body. And I visualize being in that body, just releasing and softening and trying to open my heart to love a very righteous warrior love in that healing. And, and I hope that that does something somewhere in the universe. And then, so that's where my practice is. And then in my events, for example, um, like at the warm up, uh, an event that I host, it's a monthly event that I, that I, uh, created and I curated and, and I host at, uh, the Slacky Lounge and One Brands. In that event, during, or at least at the end of every event, I always acknowledge the land that we're on, the sacred land that we're on, the taken land that we're on. I acknowledge whatever, you know, pain and suffering is being experienced in the world. And the reason for that is because we raise the vibration so high while we're celebrating with music. And I feel like there's so many things we could do, right? To help situations, that's the very least we could do is raise the vibration. And it might be the very least, but it's something, right? It's something we can do when there's nothing you can do is raise the vibration. And what we're going to do with that is intentionally send that vibration to the places in the world that are experiencing trauma and are in need of deep healing. And that might just ripple outward or it might show up in our kindness to another person. Whatever it is, just bringing that um, understanding that we are cultivating a vibration, bringing that to the front of our mind and intentionally utilizing that. It's energy. It means no secret that everything is energy. Right. And we don't have to have the most scientific, specific understanding of that to know that that's true. Right. 
So um, I, I find what you said about your individual practice fascinating because I haven't ever, I mean, I do that, but that was such a great way to explain it to someone who maybe hasn't done that before. So really going within and feeling the feels and the smells and maybe even the thoughts or the emotions that might be happening um, to someone, to maybe, uh, you know, a mirror self of you. Not only does it cut down on the separation between us and our brothers and sisters across this planet, but it also brings us closer, right? It doesn't just cut the separation. It brings more of a community, more of a cohesive collective. And then once that happens and we start healing or sending healing and love to that part of ourselves, because I mean, I'm a big believer that we are all one. I am that. And if I am that, then there's a part of me that is the pain that's being experienced around the world. So that was just, I feel super important point that you make is to actually take the time to go there, dedicate that time. If you don't feel like you can do anything and you're not doing that, then you really are doing nothing, right? So let's hold ourselves accountable also. Sure. I also think it's important um, as an empath, um, you know, you feel other people's feelings and there's, there's, there's a point where you can just feel it and then just feel it and then kind of be paralyzed by it. But there's a step that you can go beyond that's healthy for you and hopefully for the people whose feelings that you're feeling. And that's that extra step of, okay, well, if I'm feeling this and they're feeling this, how can I consciously release this? How can I, you know, um, send a vibration to them so that they maybe can consciously release this? That's the step that we, that we must take as empaths, I feel. Right. And I think what that brings up too for me is that where we are, we don't have this sense of dire straits, right? Like I'm in a place right now that's completely safe. I'm not worried about a bomb. I'm not worried about soldiers. I'm not worried about fires. I'm not, I have a roof. I've got my dog sleeping comfortably next to me. And so how do we take that energy and infuse it into the energy that we're sending so that there is that sense of safety and, hey, I got you. And it's really hard where you are now. And your sister on the other side of the planet or on the next island is here loving you through this. Right? And that's, that's conscious gratitude. You know, that's having conscious gratitude for all of those blessings and and, you know, I think, I think about like, if I was in a position, if I was there, I would be hands on, on the ground, you know, I would be doing, everybody does what they can, where they can, where they are, you know? And so, um, yeah, I just think it's important to know, understand what you can do and try to do something, even if it's just energetic, even if it's yeah. just a conversation, because even if we have conversation, if we're if there's misinformation that's being, uh, you know, trans transpired in a conversation, then that's out there. Then that, then that, then uh, uh, someone can see that and and help to that to uh, become clear, you know. So it's important just to do something. Do something, and it looks different, right, for everybody. I mean, that was something that we were talking about. I mean, you are you've got your hands in so many different pots. It's 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 really beautiful to witness. And, um, I mean, one of the things you do is music. One of the things you do is yoga. One of the things you do is creating and facilitating these groups of in events, you know, where people can come together and find celebration. So I want to move into, uh, the music portion. I know you to be this amazing creatrix with 
words and song and rhymes. And would you be willing to name, do you have any, I'm sure you do, do you have any rhymes that would speak to this discussion and conversation that we're, we're in right now? Yeah. Um, I put, I'm putting you on the spot, so. I don't think, yeah, it's a very, very lovely place to be. Um, <laughs> open up. Study with it. Don't give up. I speak to my reflection. Self, get your hopes up. Don't close up. Breathe slow, really, though. Let it in. Feel it spinning on a hot the flow, you know. The ascension of vibes that I mentioned. The power of attention. Limitless comprehension. We're close. Yep, and I'm the to host. Not me, but everything mm -hmm. and every being we approach. See? Challenges will test and entice ego trips and vices. Divisiveness ignites the wrong and the righteous. Don't flinch in that fight. Round and rise higher. Reach, connect, then get inspired. Get. Universal consciousness is budding. Pretty petals peeling one by one continue. All is coming. Courage. Oneness, strength, love running through us. More triumphant than one could ever dream of. Show me grace. Show me peace. Show me love. And it's the joint hands at heart center. Cultivate the love. Energy, synergy, young and old folks alike. It be the boom, back, the base, the high hat. From the bottom to the top, out, inward, forward, back. Spin, chop. Could I spin, get it all in, get it all out. Keep me hungry, keep me humble through the snub and through the cloud. And through the fear, keep me courageous. Let my message be contagious. Teach me lessons when I question. Gift me wisdom of the ages. Patient as the page turns. Keep me gracious. Hold my wonderment of clouds, birds, time, and space. And y'all, kindly keep my ego low. Present as my sidekick, not my guiding arrow. Guide me in the long run. Hold me in the spirit. Pray that I know it when I see it. But I feel it when I hear it. Said, guide me in the moment. Hold me in the spirit. Pray that I know it when I see it. That I feel it when I hear it. For a minute. Wow. I'm glad that we have that recording. I can replay that. Um, that was... I have tears. I mean, you pretty much covered all bases. And at one point, what it really reminded me of, Jerry, was Hawaiian chants. Mm. You know, there's, I've been doing a lot of work with Kalei Nohea Clayhorn, and she teaches Hawaiian chant. And there is this respect and reverence to all that is. And there was no stone left unturned in that chant, in that rhyme that you just shared with us. And that's, it's not just magic, it's medicine. And thank you so much for listening to your medicine and sharing it and not holding it tight. <laughs> um, gosh, mahalo, mahalo. Oh, thank you so much for acknowledging that and reminding me of that. And um, also for other people, Aaron, you did it in like a funky, cool way. So, <laughs> so it, it makes it fresh. It makes it new. You could even just, I mean, you put a few beats to that and then you can dance to that. And then that's what we're getting, right? That's what we're pulling in. That's what we're surrounding ourselves with. Those are the conscious that's the consciousness that's contributing to that collective, which is just, yeah, that's, that's a business right there. <laughs> Mahalo. So, um, so we have music, right? We have movement, we have yoga, we have empathic um, meditations. What if we don't do any of those things? What are some other things that maybe we could do to dedicate this energy to some of our viewers? Like give some ideas to viewers of something they might be able to do that is simple. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is doing the dishes. When I do my dishes, <laughs> for whatever reason, um, 
It's uh, it's a very reflective time for me. And so that could be doing your dishes, folding your laundry, going into the ocean, um, anything that you that you do that um, is a is a maybe just a moment that you could take. Um, anything. I remember during the during the pandemic, my mom when I was speaking to her on the phone, she she said to me. You know, I've been praying more than I've ever prayed. I pray every time I wash my hands, and I wash my hands a hundred times a day. <laughs> you know, so she turned something um, that was like giving her anxiety into a prayer. You know, so there's 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 a million ways we can we can utilize vibration. There's a million ways we can alchemize. And that is, I mean, I love that you brought that up because that's what makes it easy right this stuff isn't hard this isn't this isn't reserved for a few people this is our birthright as humans this is our birthright as humans to be able to pray and share energy i mean that's the one thing we all have in common is energy and love right so to be able to do those things that we do every single day like Oh, I'm at a stoplight. <laughs> I'm going to send some energy or thoughts or feelings to something specific. Just bringing it to the front of the mind and the front of the heart. And you just never know how that's going to impact. You know, yes. it, you know ripple effect with how you treat the next person that you come in contact with. And then they treat the next person and they treat the next person. They say something on the internet that someone absorbs in, the, in, to, in another country. You just never know um, how it's going to impact. And why not? Why not? And it gets bigger and bigger. And not only, I mean, that brings me to another thought is a lot of people don't even, they go on walks, like they walk their dog and they're not setting an intention before they walk their dogs. But what if? What if they did? What if they went on a hike every day? Or what if they exercise five times a week and that's their half hour and or an hour? Some people do that. And that has a direction. It has a directional flow. Then you take something that is just an action that people are doing and you turn it into a, a collective prayer that's helping the planet. And I know you said these are little ways, and I agree with you because they are um, small ways of, you, of, of all of us being able, they're easy, right? And they're simple, but they're big. They can make huge impacts like what you just mentioned, huge impacts all over the world because it's that ripple that you mentioned earlier. I agree. You know, at the, at the most, we, we heal the world. At the very least, we heal our bodies, ourself, our own field, you know, and that is always, and that has to have some kind of ripple effect, even if it's the way we now treat our elders who are going to transition soon and maybe it makes their transition easier, or our children who are, you know, um, not going to be traumatized, you know, in a way that they may have been if we didn't do that, if we didn't take that moment. You know, big or small, it's still positive. Right. And you're in things like that. You do different things with kids, with the cakey. You do different um, events with collaboration with other artists. And that is also like all of these things are how you're getting yourself and right within. And then you're sharing it. And then together we're more than one are gathered. There's synergy, right? And that's super powerful and impactful. So thank you for all of the work that you are doing in the community and all of the communities that you're creating and um, your personal ripple effect because uh, I've actually only met you a couple of times and you've impacted me in just those short times that we've met and I feel grateful for that. And I'm just super grateful that you came onto the show today to be able to share some of that with people. Thank you so much, Tish. I feel the same way about you. Yeah. And so, I mean, one thing I do want to highlight is that you do have an event every month and it's at, this is an old event that you did in September 
I just missed the one in October, but we've got another one coming up in November. Do you have a date for that? Yeah, November 8th is the next one, and Lucy Lynch is a featured, and so does Men in Gray Suits. And then December 13th, I think, is the one after that. It's always the second Wednesday of the month. Okay, so that's a theme. Too. And that might be the last one, at least uh, for a few months. Um, yeah, I'm shifting into some other things. I have also a, a, an event coming up at Yoga Under the Palms uh, called An Evening with Omni, where I will be offering my offerings, teaching yoga, doing a sound sound bath, um, doing some music. And um, so that will be really nice as well. That's great. So in order for people to be able to see what you're doing so that they, um, if they're feeling called to be able to receive this medicine that you share in our community here locally, then how can they, or even like from a distance, because I know you have songs out and your rhymes are just so, so special. Um, how can they get a hold of you? Um, so I'm on social media, on Instagram as O M N I underscore M C. So on the underscore M C. Um, and on Facebook is on the MC. You can also look up Jerry Omni would be my personal page on Facebook. Um, so those are two great spots. On my Instagram is a link tree and that has a link to like some of my music. So Instagram is probably a really great place to start. Great. Um, and so for the, also I wanted to say for the event at Slack key, that's family friendly too, yeah. right? So I could bring my, I could bring my 16 year olds and what a great influence for them too, to see that, Hey, people can go up. Not everybody sounds perfect, but everybody sounds real. Yeah. Right? Not moving it through. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I love that those events are uh, family friendly and open to everybody. Um, I would like to invite you. Do you have another share that maybe we could close with? Hey, let me think. think. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Okay. Each creature, my teacher, I'm so pleased to meet you. So deeper and deeper we go. Mahalo. Third eye vision, let me name my mission. Grant my own three wishes with my intuition. I start the ignition. Now my gears be switching, but now I never trip over an inevitable vision for too long. I get up, I write a new song. Close eye, listen to colors. French kids invented in my kitchen and rhymes untwisted how I treat my condition. My perception shifted. Mental, risen, I keep. Persistent, I keep. Persistent, I keep. Persistent and omni gifting me knowledge and wisdom and soul uplifting the thoughts, colors, and pessimism, optimism, yo, sexism, racism, ageism, feel that's how I feel. Now, like haters gonna hate and likers gonna like, lovers gonna love, so I'll rock the mic. I got jokes for folks and hopes of antidotes. I got love for thugs suddenly becoming woke. I don't choke on my words because they're birthed in truth. I serve, learn from, and do from my elders and the youth. Now, look. I got a crew capable of evolution, solution, revolution, simple self-constitution. Got a song about love and a song about struggle. I don't contemplate hate, so stay outside my bubble. If you step in with stigma, I'ma address the trouble. Like mind of forward thinkers, come get in on the huddle. Strategy and change for our future generation, our family, our block hood, our region, our nation, our continent, hemisphere, expanded and whole. For yeah, the vision is global, but the action is low. Oh, that was perfect. Was oh, perfect. So much. Thank you so much, Jerry. Thanks for coming on today. And also thank you to um thank you to Think Tech Hawaii for offering this platform for us to be able to have these amazing conversations and contemplations about how we can be in our holistic wellness. And to our sponsors and donors, thank you so much for keeping this space alive. And until next time, mahalo. Mm -hmm.